Hi, and welcome to this special episode of Black Tech Talent. My name is Dara Douglas, and I'm a director at PwC. I'm really looking forward to hosting this discussion and letting you hear from my brilliant guests. Um, we probably should explain, many of you may not know, that Black Tech Talent actually started with the desire to want to profile um, more tech technologists from the black community. Um, we had success at the Black Tech Achievement Awards two, last year, where two of our people were nominated and became finalists. And so we wanted to continue to raise the profile of the fantastic black technologists that exist within the firm and beyond and inspire others. So a quick shout out, first of all, to those two people who inspired this, um, Grace Coyote, who won the Rising Star Award, Award, and then the employee of the year, Temi Nelson, um, who's actually going to be here on Monday for the Black Tech Talents International Women's Day episode. So tune in for that. Um, this year, I'm really grateful and delighted to be one of the five finalists. I'm up for Diversity Champion, and I'm thrilled to be joined by Reggie Kelly, one of my fellow directors at PwC, who's up for Innovator of the Year. It's really great. Um, we're also delighted to introduce Cecil Ajalo, who is co-founder of Founder Divine, one of Carla Brave Partners, and up for Entrepreneur of the Year. So congratulations, first of all, to you both, and also to me. Isn't Thank it great? <laughs> um, a special mention also to our three colleagues who are not here today, but up for Ally of the Year, so Becky Todd, Jocelyn Sheriff, and Supti Sakar. Um, particularly sad because Supti was supposed to be joining us today, but she's not doing too well. Um, so we hope she gets well soon, and we look forward to seeing all of you at the awards on Wednesday night. So first of all, before we kick into the questions, um, I just want to highlight why I think these awards are so important. I think especially in the world of technology, representation really does matter. We want to make sure that we have the diversity of perspectives and thought to make sure we create products that serve the user. Um, and I think in addition to that, for me personally, um, being a finalist and being able to profile and create a platform for others is what create, makes me really passionate. Um, the fact that many in our community sometimes feel a bit shy to um, um, to share their successes and achievements, um, but this award's really giving spotlight and allowing them to kind of take that moment um, to celebrate themselves. So we're really delighted and looking forward to hearing more from some of our finalists today. So what I'd love to do is introduce our two other finalists, um, maybe starting uh, with you, Reggie. Um, just tell us a bit about you and when did you realize your passion for tech? Yeah, thank you, Dara. Um, so yes, Reggie Kelly, I'm a director in uh, PwC's cloud risk uh, practice. Um, so um, specialize in helping clients navigate the risks of moving to cloud, um, but once they're in cloud, uh, helping them to get better um, uh, return on investment um, fr fr from that. Um, as you can probably tell from my accent, uh, I'm not originally from the UK. I'm really originally from Detroit in the US, um, but have now been living uh, in the London area um, for about 10 years. Um, where did my passion for tech uh, start? So actually, uh, I've been a technologist or interested in tech for a long time. So I can remember, I'm um, slightly dating myself, but I can remember um, uh, playing with my dad's uh, IBM PS1 and installing, literally installing Windows from uh, Windows 3.1 from floppy disks. Um, and uh, actually, when I when I started uh, uni, though, I um, I started uh, with a, the um, a medical pathway, so I wanted to be a doctor. Um, but spent the first sort of six months um, fixing people's computers and really um, just. Uh, you know, being really interested in just the tech side of it and switched my major to management information systems and have been involved in, in tech ever since then. Okay, true techie. How about you, Cecil? Yeah, thank you for having me as well. And um, it's congratulations, um, first and foremost, for all the PwC people that have been nominated. Uh, so yes, I'm Cecil Agilo. I'm the founder, co-founder of Foundervine mm -hmm. and uh, I'm also Chief Operating Officer. Um, so what we do at Foundervine is we help uh, underrepresented founders and overlooked founders um, to actually scale their businesses um, and really build robust uh, organizations that can get investment and achieve what they want to achieve in, 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 in the future. And um, we help a lot of tech businesses as well. Um, where did my passion for tech come from? I don't necessarily think I had a passion for tech, if I'm going to be honest. Um, I remember my first encounter with technology. It was seeing 
my cousin building a, a computer and he, he had the power unit, he had the RAM, he had the motherboard, he's putting all this together. I thought, this is pretty cool. And at the end, he had created a computer that actually turned on. <laughs> and I thought, wow, this is amazing. But I wasn't really passionate about it. Um, and then I first really came into contact with tech in a way that I now see it um, in, um, in an organization which I, I went into after university where I was um, helping manage uh, patient records. And I realized that tech actually helps us achieve things, not necessarily um, you know, just being there, but it actually helps us do things smarter, more efficiently. And I then realized I had a passion for solving problems, mm -hmm. and technology was a great way to solve problems. Mm -hmm. And that's when I started learning a lot more about how can we use technology to solve problems. And you know, that's where I, I see myself today, as someone that uses technology to help people and organizations achieve uh, a better and more efficient and more productive aims. Yeah, no, I definitely resonate with that. I don't think I'm quite as techy as um, Reggie. Um, I get very passionate about the problem solving aspect of tech. Um, and for me, the fundamental question is how do we make sure we're creating tech that works for people? Um, I hate when people are an afterthought and it's like, just, yeah, let's make sure they adopt it at the end. Um, so I'm all about how do you bring them in, engage them, co-create with them, and make them feel like technology is for them, making their lives easier. Um, and I guess that's why diversity is so important in that as well, that we don't create technology that's just for one type of user. Um, we recognize the representation. Um, so I guess I wanted to find out a bit more about what does being a finalist mean for you both? So maybe I'll start with um, you, Cecil. Yeah, well, thank you. And, um, you know, my imposter syndrome immediately kicked in when I found I was nominated for Entrepreneur of the Year. Um, you know, I am a co-founder with Izzy Obeng, who, uh, you know, helped start Founder Vine and is the main source of, of the idea for Founder Vine. Uh, but I would say the team behind us really, you know, they deserve the award for all the things that the team are doing uh, collectively mm -hmm. to push Founder Vine forwards. Uh, I was nominated last year for Rising uh, Star in Innovation. And um, unfortunately, I didn't get it, okay. right? Uh, which, which sucks, but actually the person that won it was from Founder Vine's community, mm -hmm. and they were building an analytics platform for logistics and also ecosystem sustainability. And I thought, this is amazing. I would much rather someone from our community wins it, because it's a testament to what that Founder Vine amazing. are doing. Yeah, so I really love the fact that we do have these awards and the recognition that it brings to people, um, all of you, and, and also the community that really need the spotlight to be on them. Yeah, amazing. How about you, Reggie? Um, yes, yeah, so, so obviously a hugely, uh, hugely privileged and honored um, to, to be nominated, let alone a finalist. Uh, but similar to, to what Cecil said, you know, it's really a testament to the work that the team has put in collectively. Um, and secondly, and I think most importantly, um, and I'll just tell a little bit of a story. So I was um, I had the opportunity to be a panelist at uh, last year's um, UK Black Business Week uh, during one of the tech sessions. Um, and there were maybe uh, a couple hundred people in the audience. And then afterwards, I just had numerous conversations with people um, that said, you know, I was so inspired by the story that you told. Um, I never thought that someone that looked like me or you um, could be in a senior position in a big four. Um, so if I think about um, uh, how it makes me feel, um, it's the wider impact um, that, that really excites me, um, and not just what the, that, that impact within the firm, but um, externally as well. Yeah, so important. Um, I really appreciate that. I, I guess want to just dig a bit more into Founder Vine, um, and I'm particularly proud that you've been recognised for that as one of our Colour Brave partners. Um, Colour Brave is something that's very close to my heart. I chaired the Multicultural Business Network and launched Colour Brave back in 2016, and at that time it was a very grassroots initiative because we, co we were conscious that the topic of race wasn't really talked about.
about enough in the workplace. Um, and so we wanted to make conversations on race much more of a, a mainstream thing. And it's amazing to see now like the scale that it has across PwC. It's kind of commonplace. A lot of our meetings start with a color brave moment and discussion. And it's even moved beyond PwC walls to some of our ecosystem, our partners. Um, so really proud to hear some of the stuff that you've been doing with Founder Vine there. I'd love to hear a bit more about it. And also Founder Fest, you were telling me about that earlier. Tell us some more. Yeah, first of all, Dara, thank you for creating Colour Brave. And I know so many of the other charities on uh, the Colour Brave initiative and also social enterprises are really, really grateful, not just for the support, um, but also the publicity around that and what it means. And we've been associated with PwC for a number of years now. And I think some of the most important help that we've got are from advisors that are in within PwC. And I think this is it's just been really great. And PwC have been very giving in terms of time and knowledge. Uh, so first of all, thank you for, the, for setting that up. Um, so Foundervine, um, you know, we exist to, um, to, to bridge this gap in inequality when it comes to building a, a startup and scaling it. And um, if you look at the stats, you'll see that um, the median wealth of a black family in this country is one tenth of that of, of, a, of a white household. Uh, you'll also see that um, the average uh, revenue a black business makes is around 25K, and for a white business, that's 35K. There is disparity in wealth, and there's also disparity in opportunity. Mm -hmm. But that shouldn't be a barrier for innovation and new businesses. And that's why Foundervine mm -hmm. exists, essentially, to bridge that gap. And uh, you mentioned FounderFest. Mm -hmm. So on the 20th of May, we are bringing together over 500 people, investors and founders. We're going to have panels. We're going to have um, lightning talks, pitching sessions, mentoring, and a massive marketplace where founders can demonstrate their wares and, and sell to the public. And we'd really love for anyone to come, come along. Um, it's going to be really, really exciting. Um, and why have we set that up? If you look at building a business, uh, investment and network, uh, having a good network are really, really important things. And I was saying before that if you look at someone like Elon Musk, who is seen as the owner of, of Tesla, he only owns 14% of, of Tesla's stock. And that shows you that he needed to get investors to believe in him so that he could build his business. And for someone that exited PayPal, who had hundreds of millions of dollars, mm -hmm. who still needs investment, I think that's very telling. And with Foundervine, what we want to do is help founders uh, get the investment, get the networks, and also achieve um, a sustainable growth mm -hmm. in, in a robust way that they can continue uh, surviving, uh, thriving, and also providing opportunities for their communities as well. Mm, such important work, and it definitely makes sense that you're up for the award. Um, Reggie, you've also got a very interesting story, Innovator of the Year, and I hear that some of that came from being a dad. Tell us about that. Yeah, so actually a dad for the second time. <laughs> um, um, but, but yeah, so it's it's slightly an uncommon thing, I think, for, for men to take um, time out um, I and mean, I know I had to battle a lot internally as well. Mm. Um, and I think particularly in the black community, at least, um, a lot of you know us here, and I know I heard growing up, you know, you need to to work harder than others. Um, you need you need to sit down and and do um, work really hard, and people people will notice. And I can remember um, telling my dad that I'm going to take five months off um, with uh, for for Jack, our little one. Uh, and his reaction was like, no, you, you can't do that. Um, um, but honestly, it's one of the best things that I've ever done. Um, it's, uh, you know, firstly, it allowed me to, to spend time um, with my family, and it's time that um, you, I would have never gotten back. Um, and I feel that I have a bond with, with my family, with, my, with Eve, who's, who's five and a half, and Jack, who's, who's two and a half now. Um, that um, I'm hoping will, 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 last, will last a lifetime. Um, and um, secondly, it gave me a chance to really sit back and reflect on what are the things that are important mm -hmm. for me. Um, and it allowed me to sort of rebalance my portfolio coming back to the firm and, and really saying, actually, you know, the area that I really want to pursue is around um, the cloud area, mm -hmm. Um, and the digital asset um, cloud cost assurance that 
uh, I really was passionate about about doing. Mm. Um, and I think that the last thing that I'll mention is just the support that I got from the firm in doing that. Mm -hmm. Um, it has, has really been amazing. Um, so um, uh, just another plug for, for uh, shared parental leave and, and, the, and the impact that that's, it, it's had on me. Yeah, it's so important as well. And I think um, when we talk about the kind of gender diversity side of things, we, we often hear the, the narrative around allyship and the role that men play in allowing women to be able to progress in the workplace. Um, when it comes to race diversity, sometimes it's not as much of a topic. So I'm really glad that the awards has this allyship category. Um, it's a shame that Sukti is not here, but we do have, as I mentioned, three amazing women um, who are up for the award um, this year from PwC. And Sukti was here to talk about some of the work she's been doing in Manchester um, to drive recruitment of a thousand technologists and doing so in a way that really meets our diversity commitments. Um, so it's something that's important. It's, we need everyone to get involved in driving the progression of all um, minorities. Um, so when it comes to allyship, have you guys got any examples of where it's played a role in your career? Maybe, so I'll start with you. Yeah, absolutely. I can tell you um, where uh, I wish I had allyship um, first and foremost when I was in uh, consulting. Um, I was on a project and I was actually doing very well. Mm. Unfortunately, the way that we were ranked in that company meant that I had to be compared to other projects and mm. there was no one really there in the, in the boardroom batting for me when it came to promotion. So all of my peers got promoted and I didn't even though I was doing good work mm. and I actually hadn't looked at uh, getting a sponsor mm. or getting anyone to, to, to be an ally for mm. me and it felt really bad I actually left, left the company after that. Um, but I have had positive experience where uh, I was working with uh, a guy from Spain and he saw the work I was doing mm. and he uh, left uh, the company and, and went to form his own business and recommended me to some uh, investors in Spain. And they literally just said, hey, Cecil, um, what are you doing? We want to invest in you. Mm. And I raised six figures um, just from that. And it was actually, my imposter syndrome there, like it, it kicked in immediately. I was like, who am I? Like, what is this? <laughs> but that shows you that when you have someone that believes in you, actually some of the barriers that you would typically face, they, you, you can't even see them. Mm. And I'd say definitely for, for anyone really considering you know, pushing for progress in their life. Find those people mm. that can help you. Find those people that believe in you. Don't focus on those people that, you know, are really hard to convince to believe in you because you'll just be driving down the road with the handbrake on. That's what it feels <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah, and just to build on that point a little bit, I think for me the importance of allyship is 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 people that understand the impact that diversity has in the workplace mm. and and to truly build the most creative and innovative solutions, mm. you know, we need to have diversity of thought. Mm. Um, so uh, if I think back to, um, you know, my career and, and the, the allies and supporters that I've had who have identified, well, we, we see that, you know, Reggie brings something different to the table um, and, um, you know, been able to um, elevate my position um, to, to, to really have an impact. Um, so for me, it's um, crucially important and it's, it's great that there is a category in the Black Tech Achievement Awards around allyship. Definitely. Um, I appreciate that. I can see there's a few questions that have come through um, from the live audience. One of them is, what were the biggest challenges you faced in your career? It's quite a big question. Um, I want to start with you, Reggie. Any thoughts on some of the big things that might be challenging or could affect our audience as well? Yeah, so I think this has evolved over time. I think um, uh, going back to, you know, I remember my first uh, couple of days on in my 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 first job, um, and there was um, one of my dad's friends um, had uh, been instrumental in, in in getting getting me the job, and uh, he was um, uh, pretty pretty senior in the organization. Uh, he was a uh, um, a, a black, and he said to me, "You know, you're really carving out your own path, um, and there's not there's not really anyone mm. um, that's black that's in the technology area for for the for the company that I worked for." Mm. Um, and I remember thinking about that and thinking, oh, "Okay, that's um, I, I didn't really grasp grasp the grasp it at the time, but over time, I." 
you know, I recognize how challenging it has been mm -hmm. to not have, mm -hmm. you know, those role models that you can look up to. Mm -hmm. um, and you sort of mentioned the imposter syndrome, mm -hmm. you know, thinking, well, you know, I don't look like and sound like a lot of, um, you know, the people that are in senior positions. So uh, a lot of it's been internal for me. I need to, you know, mm -hmm. you know, work through those challenges, but um, at the same time, you know, having the you know people to to speak to, having mentors, mm -hmm. um, for me has re been really valuable. So important. Anything from you, Cecil? Absolutely. And and what Reggie said about mentors, um, you know, very early on in my career, I didn't even understand the importance of having mentors at all and I think if I go back that's something that I would have focused a bit more on is finding uh, those people that can you know pass on that information and 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 really help you scale up your career because uh, maybe I could have got to where I where I was uh, faster in a, in a more robust way mm. um, I'd also say another challenge of mine has been uh, I used to think that you know uh, getting promoted and, and progressing your career was just about working hard mm -hmm. and I didn't understand that you need to actually tell people about what you're doing mm -hmm. and get the recognition for it so you can do more and I just always had my head down just doing work and other people would take the recognition for the work that I was doing yeah. and I would sit down and just go okay that's fine you know eventually I'll be seen um, but it nothing really happened for me until I started to tell people hey by the way I built this warehouse using Excel and people go, oh my goodness how did you do that <laughs> and then you know you get into a conversation and people do understand what your skill sets are and they start you know helping you apply those skill sets in area where areas where you can grow so for me it's, it's it's not just about doing the hard work anymore it's also about you know how do you how do you tell people and how do you um, how do you let people know that you can also help in, yeah. in, in certain areas and that's why I think the uh, black tech achievement awards are really good because it, sh it it recognizes people and gives them that platform to do that yeah I mean let's just dig into that a bit more because I think it's something that black communities really do find uncomfortable and awkward <laughs> um, telling other people about your achievements they sometimes think it's, it's bragging or not modest how did you resolve that in your mind Cecil to go okay let me just actually share what I'm doing yeah and you know you, what you say is all too true and I, I'm from a, a Ghanaian black background and um, you know in a, in a Ghanaian household there's certain things you can't do you have to be humble you cannot <laughs> brag about anything otherwise you'll get punished um, so coming into the workplace and then mm -hmm. you know being told you have to uh, you know, be able to, to tell people about what you're doing it felt like bragging mm -hmm. and I was anti-bragging um, what I didn't realize is that if you don't tell people about what you're doing, they're not going to know. Mm -hmm. Like, it's, there's not like a, a, a newspaper journalist <laughs> coming to you saying, oh, "What have you done today? Mm -hmm. And what have you what have you done last quarter? And how's that impacted the company?" Mm -hmm. There isn't anything like that. So then I realized actually it's not bragging; it's about communicating, yeah. communicating with your team, communicating with others, and telling them, "Hey, this is what I'm about, and this is what I can do." Mm -hmm. And when I started to look at it from that point of view. It, it became a lot more comfortable to yeah. tell people, hey, by the way, this is what I'm doing and this is what I've done. And now it feels very natural. Yeah, really helpful. That's really good advice. Um, there's a question sort of directed to me, so I'm going to throw it back to myself. <laughs> um, it just says that black women are still underrepresented in tech, which is very true. Um, so what's it been like to work in the sector and how do I put my, what do I put my success down to? Um, I kind of wanted to um, build on some of the points that you guys mentioned, especially the imposter syndrome one. It's, it's very natural to be like I'm the only person here so how do I deal with that um, I know at the beginning of my career it felt like I had to try everything to just keep my head down conform as much as possible try and like navigate the system and none of my family members had necessarily come from professional services so it was a completely different world um, and I think there was a moment um, when I was going from senior associate to manager where one of my mentors which is why it's so important just gave me the advice about um, my personal brand um, and I felt like again it's really uncomfortable like am I going to brand myself what does that mean um, but he said to me that oftentimes women and ethnic minorities focus all their time
time on trying to fit in um, and white men are spending their time trying to stand out. So why am I spending so much time trying to fit in? I need to identify what is it about me that's going to help me to stand out. And I, I've said that lots of times when I'm speaking to people and sharing advice, but it's something that stayed with me my whole career since then. What is my thing that's going to make me stand out? Um, and because I'm black, people are going to notice me anyway. Mm. So there's no hiding. <laughs> um, so actually, how do I lean into that? Um, what's the authenticity or version of myself I want to bring into this meeting? How do I take up space? <laughs> so I think I've become a lot more comfortable in my own skin and my own presence, having my point of view, sharing that, and that has massively had an impact and then my ability to, ha to bring a different perspective mm. into a conversation. And that's probably what's valued, actually. Mm. So it's just interesting that something I was actually scared of and shying away from is now one of my superpowers and something that I really try to embrace. Um, that's probably the thing that's helped me a lot in my career. Yeah, but I think it's interesting as we've all kind of shared similar stories and similar challenges that we've faced. And, I think, you know, Dara, in, in the firm, we've, we've placed a lot of emphasis on diversity mentoring schemes mm -hmm. um, and the importance of that. And I found a huge amount of value from mentors that I've used. Um, and um, I, I play a role as a mentor as well. So I think I just think it's interesting how each of us have shared kind of similar challenges that, that, that we face. OK. Um, so I guess one final question before we close. Um, what's your advice to the audience? And there is a question on here as well about cost of tech and learning tech and how you get into it. So if you can wrap that in, even better <laughs> bonus points. I'm going to start with you, Cecil. How would you say? Yeah, thank you. And um, yeah. I didn't study any uh, technology discipline in university. I did biomedical science because I, I wanted to be a doctor, you know, just, just like <laughs> Reggie. Uh, but when I did my work experience, I realized, actually, this is not for me, guys. Um, so I, I went into tech without really understanding, you know, some of the basic concepts in technology. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people now think that they need to, to code, mm -hmm. right? Be able to code or understand how to hack or understand, you know, the HTTP protocol and all of this stuff. And actually, um, that's helpful. But tech is really about solving problems mm. in a smart way. It's about reducing the amount of work that um, we as humans do that is not valuable mm. to us. And when you look at it that way, there's so many things that you can do in tech. You could be a project manager. You could um, be someone that is doing quality checking. You could be doing testing. You could be a designer. Mm -hmm. There's so many different areas. And I think looking at tech as one whole thing, um, maybe you know, try and look at it mm. in its individual parts because there will be something there for you. Definitely, I also want to mention that uh, tech is moving very quickly. Um, over Christmas, we were introduced to ChatGPT, and now none of us writes emails anymore. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. That's not me. But um, you can see now that um, programmers are actually referring to ChatGPT instead of Stack Overflow or Google, which they used to do. And ChatGPT is actually helping them write code. That's just an example. And what that shows you is that the most important thing about being in tech is your ability to think. Mm. And it's that ability to think and how you apply yourself that is really important. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. And you, Reggie? Yeah, yeah, so I guess my, the, my biggest advice would be just be willing to learn and be willing to, to, be, to put yourself in uncomfortable positions. If I think about my career, you know, I worked um, and spent the early part of my career in Detroit, spent two years in Germany. Mm. Um, remember, you know, day one in Germany, I went to uh, a meeting. The entire meeting was in German. Um, <laughs> and I didn't speak German, obviously. And uh, it was so, um, I, but I learned a lot about myself during that, that time. I've uh, been in London for, uh, uh, or the, the UK for, for about 10 years now um, and have played various different roles within the firm. Um, and um, what I've learned the most, what, you know, the times that I've learned the most is when I've been um, put in uncomfortable positions. Mm -hmm. So um, just to be, be willing to learn. And back to, to Cecil's point around, you know, it, we're, when we're looking to identify people to bring into the firm, it's not so much what is the specific skill that they have. Mm -hmm. It's that going back to, you know, are we confident that they'll be able to um, think and learn? Um, because tech is moving at a pace where 
just because you've learned and you have a certification in a particular area doesn't mean that's going to be relevant in even one year's time. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so, so that that part is is crucially important. I love it and great advice from both of you. Thank you so much for joining us. The curiosity, growth mindset, willingness to learn. I hope there's some great things there you can take away. And I want to thank all the audience for tuning in and joining us. Uh, we look forward to seeing you again soon.